In contrast to the classical sociological theories, we have something called conflict theory. In contrast to classical sociological theories, which are more on the functionalist side, conflict theorists view society through the lens of group domination. It's very much a perspective on power, and they view social order as a temporary state that results from the dominance of one group over another. Social change is therefore viewed as both inevitable and good, and occurs when subordinate groups overthrow dominant groups. So it's like what Marx talked about when he predicted that a revolution will happen and capitalism would be overcome. Furthermore, the social conflict theorists also predicted that change will happen quickly and often in a disorderly and forceful fashion. Meanwhile, Ralph Darendorf recognized that all social systems have elements of both conflict and consensus. So Darendorf emphasized social positions or roles in society rather than the people occupying those positions. For Darendorf, authority is inherent in the social positions themselves and is not a result of the psychological or behavioral characteristics of those individuals who occupy these roles. So in comparing Marx and Weber, Farganis writes, for Marx, the object of social analysis was to change the world. For Weber, it is enough to try to understand it. While Marx was more of a revolutionary in his ideas, Weber just wanted to prestigion or understand. So Marx was heavily influenced by the German philosopher Georg Hegel, who used the concept of dialectic, which is the idea that contradiction is a necessary part of social life to understand change. Hegel's idea on how people's thinking advance went something like this. There would always be an original idea, and then someone else would come along having a directly opposite idea. Eventually, after much debating, they would sort of reach a compromise. So the two ideas kind of met in the middle to create a new idea. Marx was also influenced by another philosopher called Feuerbach. Both Hegel and Feuerbach were saying that ideas are the things that govern people's behavior. People create social structures to conform to their beliefs. This then control the behavior of every individual. But Marx didn't quite agree with them. He thought otherwise. Why did people need ideas in the first place? It's like the question of the chicken and the egg. So Marx said, although ideas can be social creations, there were economic reasons behind it. Economic reasons are related to how much resources there are in the world and how people should organize themselves around it. Ideas were hence always closely tied to the material conditions of the particular society people lived in. To understand the origins of these ideas, we need to study the relations between capital and labor. Now Marx is a realist because he doesn't just say that capitalism causes exploitation of the poor by the rich. He tries to also look at underlying mechanisms and also made a prediction, which could be refuted. This prediction was that capitalism would eventually meet its own demise. Up to today, however, it still hasn't. So Marx was concerned with, why don't we study real concrete stuff rather than ideas, like the extent of material life, like relations of labor, social relationships, the structure of society, ideology, etc., which could be measured a lot more empirically than things like the human spirit. And regarding the material nature of societies, a simple social structure could be derived from it, from the mode of production of society. This would then determine the nature of class relationships as well as all other social institutions. So the mode of production consists of the forces of production, or the means of production, and also the relations of production. When taken together, this would form the economic base, or infrastructure. When technology changes, for example from agricultural mode of production to industrial mode of production, this will create tensions within the forces and relations of production. So we can imagine society as possessed of two layers. The bottom is the material base or infrastructure, which consists of the forces of production or means of production and the relations of productions that form around them. 
And the top layer would be the superstructure, where it consists of ideas that come from the infrastructure, from the relations of production. This is where you have culture, politics, religion, or education. As the infrastructure influences the superstructure, which is the way material goods are allocated, influencing the way people develop ideas, the technological change will create changes in the superstructure. For Marx, this is called conflict. Marx said conflict creates history as it moved from one era into another. Now we come into another school of thought that's also inspired by conflict theory. The Frankfurt School is the name now given to both the theories and group of scholars connected to the Institute of Social Research affiliated with the University of Frankfurt in Germany and Columbia University in New York. And this school was composed of many theorists from many disciplines, so it's multidisciplinary. Many members of the school were trained in philosophy and they were influenced by thinkers like Nietzsche, Kant and Hegel. And they also shared an interest in Marx although there were some differences in the way they interpreted things. So critical theory began as a critique of other schools of thought. Its aims are many, to bring materialist analysis, similar to Marxist analysis, into social analysis, to connect theory to action, to revive Marx's ideas, which had been reified and sometimes misinterpreted, and to analyse society and culture as a totality, rather than aspects in isolation. And they were also unified by their critique of the positivism of social sciences.